Researchers have investigated the accuracy of star formation rate measurements using direct star counts in molecular clouds. This method, commonly applied to nearby star-forming regions, estimates the star formation rate, SFR, by counting young stellar objects, YSOs, in a particular protostellar class, along with a typical protostellar mass and lifetime associated with that class. However, the underlying assumptions, such as a constant star formation history, SFH, and its validity for all protostellar classes, have not been fully tested. To address this, the authors employed Monte Carlo models to test the validity and robustness of the method. Synthetic clusters were generated with stars forming at times randomly drawn from a specified SFH distribution function, which can be either constant or time-dependent with a burst-like behavior. The masses of the protostars were randomly drawn from a stellar initial mass function, IMF, which can be similar to that of the Milky Way field or variable within observed limits among young stellar clusters. The findings indicate that only the SFR derived using the class 0 population can reproduce the true SFR at all epochs, regardless of the shape of the SFH. In contrast, SFR estimates based on more evolved populations of protostars, class 1, class F, class 2, and class 3, only reproduce the real SFR at later epochs when their numbers have reached a steady state. This holds true for both constant and time-dependent SFH scenarios, and is independent of the IMF. The SFR based on class 0 alone can provide reliable estimates. Furthermore, the authors demonstrate that offsets between class 1 and class 2 and the true SFR, plotted as a function of the number ratios of class 1 and class 2 versus class 3 YSOs, can provide information on the SFH of observed molecular clouds. Accurate understanding of the SFR is crucial in astrophysics, as it determines various observed properties of galaxies and affects their chemical and dynamical evolution. Within individual molecular clouds, the SFR is regulated by physical processes such as self-gravity, supersonic turbulence, and chemical composition. Measuring the star formation rate, SFR, relies on various indicators, including those based on stellar light from young stars or dust-processed stellar light. However, these methods assume a universal stellar initial mass function, IMF, which recent work has shown is not the case. In nearby star-forming regions, SFRs are often inferred by directly counting young stellar objects, YSOs, or protostars in different evolutionary stages, identified in the infrared. The number of YSOs in a given stage is converted into a SFR using equation 1, which depends on assumptions about average mass and protostellar lifetimes. This work aims to estimate biases in SFR estimates and their amplitudes. Synthetic populations of N protostars are generated, with masses drawn from an IMF and lifetime spanning the realistic range of each class. The real SFR is compared to the one derived using equation 1 for protostars in different classes. The model consists of three elements, the protostellar mass function, the star formation history, SFH, of the YSOs, and their lifetimes associated with each class. The protostellar mass function is described by a tapered power law function, TPL, characterized by two power laws in the low and high mass regimes, and a characteristic mass. The TPL is given by equation 2, with parameters that can be varied within the ranges permitted by observations of young galactic stellar clusters. Protostars are classified into classes I, II, and III based on the slope of the spectral energy distribution, said, in the 2 to 20 micrometers wavelength range. Each class is associated with different phases of star formation and is characterized by a specific said shape. Class II protostars are typically associated with lifetimes of around 2 mir. By comparing the real SFR to the estimated SFR, this work aims to quantify biases in SFR estimates and understand their implications for our understanding of star formation. The authors present four realizations of the birth time of protostars, each with a flat, constant star formation history, SFH, and a Gaussian SFH. These realizations illustrate the different stages of protostellar evolution, including class 0, class 1, class 2, and class 3, which correspond to distinct phases of protostellar development. These stages include the formation of a young stellar object, YSO, in the central region of a protostellar core, 
the collapse of the envelope onto the central object, the emergence of a disk around the central star, and the dissipation of the disk. The exact duration of each evolutionary stage for YSOs is uncertain, and estimates of the mean duration of each stage depend on the number of objects found in each class and star-forming regions, which may be affected by misclassifications. The usual approach is to use the number of YSOs found in different classes to derive relative ages for each class, assuming a constant star formation rate and that YSOs are formed at a constant rate over time. The authors adopt the values of lifetimes measured by Evans et al. 2009, which were derived from observations of several nearby molecular clouds in the Spitzer Legacy Project. These lifetimes include mean lifetimes of class 0, class 1, and the flat class, which are 0.1 mir, 0.44 mir, and 0.35 mir, respectively. The uncertainties on these lifetimes are large and the authors adopt uncertainties of 50% of their adopted values. The lifetimes associated with each protostellar class are drawn using equation 4, and the bin sizes for each protostellar lifetime distribution are adjusted to the distribution's mean value. Figure 3 shows one realization of the distribution functions of the lifetimes associated with each protostellar class. The authors note that the lifetime associated with class 3 YSOs is uncertain and was not estimated in the C2D data. Overall, the author's approach is to use the observed distributions of YSOs to constrain the star formation history and derive the corresponding lifetimes for each class. The authors delve into the star formation history, SFH, in star forming regions, challenging the conventional assumption of a constant SFH. They cite examples of age distributions in young clusters, such as the Orion Nebula cluster, which exhibit a linearly increasing SFH followed by a burst of star formation. The authors also reference numerical simulations that demonstrate similar SFHs, featuring a slow increase in star formation during cloud assembly, followed by a burst as gas sinks to the central regions. To model SFHs, the authors consider both constant and time-varying cases. For the constant SFH, they assume a birth rate of 5 times 10 carat, 5, stars per year. For the time-dependent SFH, they employ a Gaussian function to describe the probability of star birth times, with a peak position and standard deviation. The authors generate 250 models for each case, sampling stars from a Milky Way-like initial mass function, IMF, with 500 stars per cluster. They randomly assign lifetimes to each protostar drawing from Gaussian distribution functions for each protostellar class, as described in equation 3. The lifetimes are drawn within the plus or minus 1 sigma uncertainty range for each quantity. The results are presented in figures 14, showcasing the birth times of protostars, the distribution functions of protostellar lifetimes, and the time evolution of the number of protostars in each class. The authors highlight the differences between the constant and time-dependent SFH cases particularly in the peak formation rates and the decline of protostar numbers over time. Finally, the authors calculate the star formation rate, SFR, using equation 1, taking into account the mean lifetimes of each protostellar class. They also measure the true SFR by summing the masses of protostars formed within each time step, as described in equation 5. The time evolution of the SFR is displayed in figure 5 demonstrating the impact of the SFH assumption on SFR estimates. In a recent study, researchers have investigated the accuracy of star formation rate, SFR, estimates derived from direct star counts in young star-forming regions. The investigation employed a Milky Way-like initial mass function, IMF, and considered two distinct star formation histories, SFHs, a constant SFH and a Gaussian-like SFH with a peak at 2 mir and a standard deviation of 1 mir. The time evolution of the number of protostars in different protostellar classes for both SFHs is depicted in Figure 4, where each cluster contains 500 stars. Figure 5 illustrates the time evolution of the SFR measured using the populations of young stellar objects, YSOs, found in different classes and their respective lifetimes. The dashed line represents the true SFR. The findings suggest that while SFR estimates measured using a single class of protostars converge to the real value, they do so with a delay that increases for more evolved protostars. This implies that for constant SFHs, 
SFR measurements will only be reliable if only class 0 and I protostars are considered in young star-forming regions and class 2 protostars in older regions, i.e. ages is greater than or equal to 2 mir. Figure 6, left panel, compares the true SFR measured directly from the models with an SFR estimate using the total number of YSOs, assuming a characteristic YSO lifetime of 2.5 mir. The results demonstrate that using the total number of YSOs provides a poor approximation to the real SFR, underestimating it by a factor of approximately equals 10 to 100 in young star-forming regions and overestimating it by a factor of a few to several in older regions. The right panels of figures 5 and 6 display the same SFRs calculated for cases where the SFH is a Gaussian-like function. The results exhibit similar patterns to those observed with a constant SFH with the additional effect that at advanced epochs, i.e., ages is greater than or equal to 3.5 mir. The estimates of the SFR based on class 2 and class 3 protostars or the total number of protostars overestimate the true SFR. The time evolution of star formation rates, SFRs, and their measurement using protostellar populations are the focus of this section. Four realizations of true SFRs and SFRs estimated from the total number of young stellar objects, YSOs, and an average lifetime for all classes are presented. Each cluster has a Milky Way-like initial mass function, IMF, and either a constant star formation history, SFH, or a Gaussian-like SFH with varying peak times and standard deviations. The results show that SFRs estimated using protostellar populations can significantly underestimate or overestimate true SFRs by several orders of magnitude, particularly when star formation has ceased and class 2 and class 3 protostars are long-lined. To clarify the offset between estimated and true SFRs, the ratio of these quantities is calculated and presented in figure 7. The ratios are averaged over 250 realizations for each case with the left panel representing a flat SFH and the right panel representing a Gaussian-like SFH. Ideally, the offset parameter, eta i, representing the ratio of the estimated SFR to the true SFR, should be close to unity. However, the results indicate significant departures from unity, especially around and after the peak of star formation at approximately 2 mir for the time-dependent, Gaussian-like SFH models. Additional models with varying widths of the Gaussian SFH are run to explore how the duration of the burst affects the departure from unity. These models include cases with sigma t equals 0.5 mir, a narrow, high-amplitude burst, and sigma t equals 2 mir, an extended, low-amplitude burst. Estimating star formation rates, SFRs, in star-forming regions is crucial for understanding galaxy evolution. This research explores the accuracy of SFR measurements using different classes of young stellar objects, YSOs, and their total number. Notably, class 0 protostars provide consistently accurate SFR estimates, regardless of the star formation history, SFH. In contrast, estimates based on more evolved protostars are reliable only when the SFH is constant or exhibits a weak burst and the star-forming regions are older than Tumir with a significant fraction of evolved protostars. Furthermore, the study reveals that estimates relying on the total number of protostars and a characteristic protostellar lifetime are inaccurate, regardless of the SFH and region age. The impact of variable protostellar mass functions on SFR estimation is also examined. By randomly drawing masses from a truncated power law, TPL, function. The research demonstrates that the parameters characterizing the shape of the initial mass function, IMF, can be randomly drawn from Gaussian distribution functions, resulting in similar effects as those observed in models with a fixed IMF. This suggests that IMF variability does not significantly affect SFR estimation. Additionally, the study investigates the influence of different numbers of protostars on SFR estimation. Models with lower or higher numbers of protostars display the same effects as those observed in models with n equals 500 protostars, but with increased and decreased levels of temporal fluctuations, respectively. Overall, the research highlights the importance of using class 0 protostars for accurate SFR estimation and demonstrates the limitations of other methods, emphasizing the reliability of the proposed approach.
This section of the research paper explores the impact of a variable initial mass function, IMF, on star formation rate, SFR, estimates. The authors employ Gaussian distributions to model the distribution of IMF parameters, centered around galactic values with standard deviations that are 50% of their mean values. A sample of 250 clusters is generated, each containing 500 stars, and SFRs are derived based on different young stellar object, YSO, classes. The results indicate that a variable IMF has minimal effect on the derived SFRs, with the features observed in previous calculations remaining present. The SFR derived using the class 0 YSO population continues to be a faithful reproduction of the true SFR while the SFR derived using the total YSO population remains a poor approximation. The possibility of utilizing class II YSOs to derive the SFR is also discussed, as they are more numerous. However, the offset between the class E derived SFR and the true SFR depends on the star formation history, SFH. The authors present figures illustrating the offsets between the class I and class II SFRs and the true SFR plotted against the ratio of the numbers of class 1 and class 3 protostars, and the ratio of the numbers of class 2 and class 3 protostars, respectively. The authors then apply their results to observational data from five nearby molecular clouds, using the number counts of class 1 and class 2 YSOs to calculate SFRs and offsets. They confirm that the assumption that the SFR values quoted for these clouds are the true values is valid, and the model with a constant SFH is able to reproduce the observed relations. The equations presented include the Gaussian distributions used to model the IMF parameters, and equation 1, which is used to calculate SFRs from YSO counts. The figures presented include figure 9, which displays the IMF parameters for four clusters with variable IMFs, figure 10, which shows the time evolution of SFRs normalized by the true SFR, figure 11 which illustrates the offsets between the class 1 and class 2 SFRs and the true SFR, plotted against the ratio of the numbers of class 1 and class 3 protostars, and the ratio of the numbers of class 2 and class 3 protostars, respectively. Figure 12 is similar to figure 11 but for the case with a Gaussian-like SFH. Overall, this section presents a detailed analysis of the effects of a variable IMF on SFR estimates, and demonstrates the potential of using YSO counts to constrain the SFH. The results are presented in a clear and concise manner, focusing on the technical details of the methodology and the implications of the findings. In a recent study, researchers examined the star formation rate, SFR, in nearby, low to intermediate mass star forming clouds using a Monte Carlo model. This model simulates the time evolution of protostars in different evolutionary classes with masses drawn from an initial mass function, IMF, and birth times drawn from a flat or time-dependent, Gaussian-like star formation history, SFH. The lifetime of protostars in each class is drawn from a Gaussian distribution centered around observed values. The authors found that the SFR derived from the class 0 population accurately reproduces the true SFR, regardless of the SFH shape. For a constant SFH, SFR estimates based on more evolved populations, class 1, F, 2, and 3, also reproduce the real SFR at later epochs. However, for a time-dependent, burst-like SFH, SFR estimates based on more evolved populations fail to reproduce the true SFR. The authors also fit the relations between the SFR offset parameters eta-i and eta-2 with the number ratios ni, niii and ni, niii respectively, for the five nearby star-forming clouds in the Evans et al. 2009 sample. They found that the relations are matched by models with a constant SFH. The authors conclude that their synthetic models can help shed light on the SFH of observed star-forming regions and that a comparison with a larger number of star-forming regions will enable distinguishing between SFHs as a function of cloud properties such as mass and surface density. They note that their models do not account for the effects of mass accretion, which may lead to misclassification between YSO classes, but believe that such effects will not significantly affect their conclusions. In Figure 12, the authors show the results of their model for a time-dependent, Gaussian-like SFH with a peak at 2 mir and a standard deviation of 1 mir, 
which overlaps with the observational data. The authors suggest that it would be interesting to include data points for more massive star-forming regions and regions located further away in the galaxy. The authors provide equations 6 and 7 for the fits to the eta i, ni, nii, and eta 2, nii, nii, relations for the flat SFH case and the time-dependent, Gaussian-like SFH, respectively. Estimating star formation rates, SFRs, using the star counting method is challenging due to biases introduced by variability in young stellar objects, YSOs, differences in stellar mass functions, and variations in YSO ages. This method assumes a direct proportionality between the number of YSOs and the mass of a region, which may not hold true. Instead, the authors propose an alternative approach, utilizing the surface gas density, sigma g, of molecular clouds as a more accurate predictor of SFRs. This approach takes into account the actual amount of gas available for star formation, supported by the observed steep sigma g SFR relation on local scales. In contrast, the relations observed for entire galaxies or on approximately equals KPC scales within galaxies are shallower. Understanding the scaling laws of star formation on individual molecular cloud scales is crucial, as is testing theoretical models and numerical simulations of star formation. The star counting method can lead to biased SFR estimates, and further research is needed to disentangle these effects and refine the sigma g SFR relation. This study highlights the importance of refining our understanding of star formation processes and emphasizes the need for continued research in this area. The star formation rate calculation is significantly influenced by the number of stars in a cluster, as demonstrated by Dib et al. In their analysis, the authors employed a fiducial number of 500 stars forming in each cluster, considering both constant and time-dependent star formation histories. This exploration delves into the effects of varying this number, using 250 and 1000 stars as examples. Figure A.1 illustrates four realizations with 250 and 1000 stars for cases with a constant star formation rate and a Milky Way-like initial mass function. The results show that proportionally decreasing or increasing the number of young stellar objects by a factor of 2 decreases or increases the star formation rate by the same factor. However, a smaller number of stars increases temporal fluctuations in the star formation rate, while a larger number decreases these fluctuations. This analysis highlights the crucial role of the number of stars in a cluster when calculating star formation rates, as it substantially affects the resulting values and their variability over time. The findings suggest that clusters with fewer stars exhibit higher temporal fluctuations in their star formation rates, while those with more stars display smoother profiles. This has significant implications for understanding star formation processes and the properties of star clusters in different galaxies. The appendix of the research paper presents supplementary proofs, concentrating on the time evolution of the star formation rate, SFR, as measured through populations of young stellar objects, YSOs, in different classes and their respective lifetimes. Figure A.1 illustrates this concept, showcasing four realizations of the time evolution of the SFR, with the dashed line representing the true SFR. The left panel displays the results for clusters with n equals 250, assuming a Milky Way-like initial mass function, IMF, and a constant star formation history, SFH. The right panel presents similar results, but with clusters having n equals 1000. This figure highlights the variability in SFR measurements resulting from the stochastic nature of YSO populations. The true SFR, depicted by the dashed line, is constant whereas the measured SFR exhibits fluctuations due to the random sampling of YSOs. The amplitude of these fluctuations decreases as the cluster size, n asterisk operator, increases, as seen by comparing the left and right panels. This demonstrates the importance of considering the uncertainties introduced by stochasticity when inferring the SFR from YSO populations. The constant SFH assumption is a simplification, and future work could involve exploring the impact of varying SFHs on the measured SFR. Additionally, the limitations of this approach, such as the reliance on YSO classification and the necessity of accurately determining their lifetimes, should be acknowledged.
Nonetheless, this analysis provides valuable insights into the challenges of accurately measuring the SFR and the need for careful consideration of the underlying assumptions and uncertainties.